Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released watchOS 7 for all supported devices. Now, unfortunately, some of the older devices are no longer supported. So what that means is Series 3, Series 4, Series 5, the new series six and new SE are the only supported devices. So if you have a series one, two or series zero, even you won't be able to get this update, but if you have the newer ones, you'll be able to, and they're available in the watch app. Now, this particular update was a pretty solid size at around 200 megabytes. When I installed it from my iPhone 11 pro max to my series four, Apple watch and brings quite a few nice changes. Now it may be a larger install, maybe smaller, it just depends which version you're coming from. Using the betas, it was pretty solid and that's what I updated from. Now, along with watchOS 7, Apple also released iOS 14, iPadOS 14, as well as tvOS 14. So a lot of updates today and a lot of solid changes. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's new. Now I have watchOS 7 installed on my series four Apple watch. And before we take a look at some of the new features such as watch faces, let's go into the watch app on iOS 14, you'll see there's a new discover button in the bottom, right? And this helps you get started with what's new. Welcome to Apple watch and Apple watch user guide and more, but there's a new feature within watch OS seven that I think is really helpful for a lot of families. So if you go to all watches in the app and then tap on add a watch, we now have an option for set up for a family member. In fact, you can have a family member share your phone that doesn't have an iPhone. So maybe you have a child, you want to use an Apple watch. You can have them use this and then you can set up things such as school time. So it has a display like this where it limits them to what they can actually look at while they're at school. It will also limit their contacts based on actually who you've decided they can talk to or text or message. And then of course you have emoji we'll talk about later. And all you do is just pair it with your watch and you're good to go. Now it requires a series four GPS and cellular Apple watch, but I believe you can pair up to five different ones. So it's nice that they've added that. And then also you can search for new watch faces in the face gallery. So we'll take a look at some of the new ones you can see here, but there's a new face gallery where you can find new Apple watch faces. So let's take a look at some of the new watch faces and you can see this is the first one. In fact, this came out with the betas. And if we press and hold on it, you'll see it says chronograph pro and this has a tachometer or tachometer built in that allows you to track your speed or time over distance. So that's kind of nice that they've built that in, but the new, next new one, is artist. So they've partnered with an artist to create this. It changes on its own based on the time of day and changes through different pieces of art. There's not really any customizations with this one. If we scroll over, you'll see that we have count up and count up is a new watch face. Of course you can customize complications. You can change the color to whatever you'd like. And it's just another watch face. Let's go back home here and we'll swipe again. And we have GMT for different time zones. So we'll hit edit and we have different colors. Of course, we can change it, change our complications and that's about it. And then let's go to lock that one in. We'll go over to Memoji. Now there is a new Memoji app. We'll take a look at in a moment, but you can edit your Memoji, change the color of the background. We can change a couple complications here and change the character as well. So you can change it to whatever you'd like. So if you want your Memoji on there, whether that be for you or a child, you can have that. Now the next one I really like, and it's called stripes and I like it because it's highly customizable. So if we hit edit, you'll see that we can customize the color of every single stripe. Not only can we do that, we can change the angle or the amount of stripes so we can have a lot or a little. And if we go over here, we can change the position. I'm at 135 degrees. Now I'm at 45 degrees. You can just rotate it however you'd like. So it's a nice little update. I suppose that has this nice one, but it doesn't have complications. So that's one of the downfalls of this style. And then the next style is typograph. This is the last new watch face. And this particular one has a few different fonts and colors. So if we want to change the color, we can change that. No complications, but we have different symbols. You can see we have Roman, Arabic, Indic, Arabic, Roman, and Devangari, if that's how you say that. And then style, classic, rounded, whatever you'd like. Again, we'll come back over here. You can change it however you'd like, change the colors as well. So if you want to keep that one, you can. 
And one thing you may have already noticed is there's a share button here. So we can now share a watch face that we've designed. So maybe we have a complicated one with a bunch of complications based on fitness that we want to do cycling. You can actually share that to someone. So share it via text message, add a contact, and then you'll share your watch faces. So you have a lot of different options to share faces now, which is really nice. You can also find new watch faces in the app store or online as well. So we should see a lot more of that soon. And one thing you may have noticed already is that notifications cannot be cleared just by pressing and holding. You actually have to scroll up and tap on clear all they've gotten rid of that force press, unfortunately. So it doesn't seem to work. You can press and hold, but it doesn't work the exact same way. So they've changed that a little bit. You still have your command or control center down at the bottom and it works just fine, but you don't have that force press feeling anymore. Now going along with the different watch faces, we have new complications as well. So let's go over to one with a bunch of complications. Maybe we'll go to count up, scroll over to a complication and let's tap on this corner here and you'll see, we have a few new ones. And one of the new ones is let's see if I can find it here. We have astronomy where we have moon phases. If we want that one, we can set it to the moon phase. We also have a new camera remote. Let me see if I passed it here. There we go. We have a camera remote. We can trigger our camera with the watch directly with one press. We also have shortcuts. So if we want to go down to, let's go all the way down here. You'll see we have shortcuts so you can run any of the shortcuts you have set up on your phone, which is really nice. And then also you have sleep and sleep is a new feature that's built into the watch. So you'll see there it says sleep. So there's actually a new app called sleep as well. So if we go back to our apps, I have them sorted this way instead of the other view, we'll go to sleep and you'll see, you can set a bedtime wake up time and you can see your full schedule. So you can set it to whatever you'd like. You can turn it off. Of course, it will remind you to go to bed. If you want to do that, set a sleep goal or wind down, and it will also track it along the app as well. So if we go into the health app, we can see that as well on our phone. Now to get the most use out of this, you want to wear your watch while you're sleeping and it will notify you if it gets down to say 30% before you go to bed that you need to charge it before you go to bed. It'll also notify you in the morning as well, but you'll see, I didn't use it to track there. It just knows based off when I put my phone down and it's got my schedule and when I wake up or go to sleep and the alarm and benefits of sleeping and those sort of things. So it's pretty nice that they've included that and it's built into the watch and hopefully it doesn't take too much of a hit to the battery, but it should be pretty good that way. Now there are some new workouts as well. So if we go into our workout app here and you'll see there's a few new ones I'm already on. We have dance. We also have cool down. We have core training and then there's some others here, but that's pretty much it as far as that goes. And so they've also updated the fitness app or what was the activity app on the iPhone to go along with that. So if we go into that, you'll see the fitness app has been updated. So it's easier to read. So we have our activity at the top, we have our workouts and then our trends and then our awards. So it's just a nice little way to see everything. I think it's better arranged. It's easier and more glanceable. Now to go along with the activity, we also have some adjustments we can make to how we want to track our activity. So or set our goals rather. So if we go up to activity and then we scroll all the way down, you'll see if you go in the main one, you've got your rings here that you can close. But if you scroll all the way down, you can now change your goals. So now it's not a set amount. You can change your calories or your move goal, your exercise goal and your stand goal. So you can change that to whatever you'd like now. So they've just allowed a little bit more customization with that. Now maps gets an update as well. So if we go to our maps here, and maybe we search for nearby restaurants. Let's just pick the top one here and we scroll down. We now have cycling directions and the cycling directions work in conjunction with your phone to let you know if there's stairs that you'll need to climb. It lets you know the grade. It doesn't say directions are available there right now for cycling, but in certain cities it's there such as San Francisco. It will let you know the grade, how difficult of a ride it will be and if you need to climb stairs and when. So it gives directions based off that. So it's a nice little update if you cycle to work or maybe just go shopping using your bike. It's a little bit nice to have that to, to know exactly how your trip will be. And then also we have a Memoji app to go along with that Memoji watch face. And so you can customize it however you'd like right in the app. Of course, Let's see if we press on this one, we can go and change our skin tone, our hairstyle, everything you can do on the phone. You can do here for the most part. So if you want to change whatever you want here, change your eyebrows, everything you want, you can change here. It's just built into the 
watch, maybe to be a little bit more fun for kids that have one of these as well. And then again, change color of your eyebrows, forehead mark, quite a few different things as well. Now there's a new feature you may have already heard about and that's hand washing. So if we go into our settings here and we scroll down, you'll see that we have hand washing. There we go. And what hand washing will do is give you a timer. It senses when you're washing your hands, it will pop on a timer and it will start counting down from 20 seconds. If you stop moving, the timer pauses and will continue when you start moving again. And then it will congratulate you or let you know when you're done by letting you know through a notification and messaging you by vibrating your wrist. So it notifies you that way as well. You can turn it off, of course, turn it back on, whatever works for you, but it's nice that they've added that. Now they've updated Siri as well with enhanced on-device dictation for faster responses. Also, Siri can now translate up to 10 different languages on device. So let me show you an example. How do I say hello in Japanese? And you can do that for various different languages as well. How do I say goodbye in Spanish? In Spanish, goodbye is adios. So it tells you, it pronounces it for you. You can play it over adios. and it tells you how to speak back and forth. So that goes along with the translate app that's new in iOS 14 as well. There is additions to battery health. So if we go into our settings, we'll go back here and let's find battery. There we go. Battery health has been added. So the battery chart is just like the one on your iPhone. And if you scroll down, you have battery health. And as you can see, I'm at 81% capacity. This is a series four. So it's a couple years old. That's within range 80% after two years is normal. And so hopefully Apple adds a battery replacement program, but it's not easy to replace a battery in an Apple watch. So it does tell you what it's like and also will tell you if it goes bad. And then also at the bottom, you have optimized battery charging. So if you put it on the charger every night, it will stop at around 80% and then fully charge up to 100% by the time you normally wake up. And it does that after it learns a few days and then it will optimize your battery charging to prolong your battery over time. Now, lastly, there's an update to hearing health under the noise app. Now noise has been there for a while. It measures the loudness or decibel level in the room and lets you know about long-term exposure, but it works in tandem with iOS 14 and updated features. So if we go into the health app again, under health, if we go to browse, we've got hearing and it will measure your environmental sound levels the past seven days, let you know about noise notifications. And if you're using headphones, it will give you more information if they were too loud and get more information about hearing health. So it's nice that it's built in. And of course you don't have to use it if you don't want to, but there's a lot of additions to Apple watch that make it great. And then of course, if you have one of the brand new series six or SE Apple watches. You may have some new features depending on which one you're coming from. But if you have a series six Apple watch, you'll also get an O2 sensor. So that'll be built in as well. So we have some new watch faces and overall it's pretty good performance wise. I have had an occasional hiccup, but in general it performs really well and battery life seems to be the same as what I had with watch OS six. So I think it's a pretty good update and there's quite a few features that hopefully will roll out around the world, depending on your local government with some of the heart rate, measures or ECG and things like that in the future. So that's it for watch OS seven. I think it's a pretty solid update. It's not huge as far as what it appears to be, but there's a lot of under the surface changes as well. And I think it's a much bigger update than it actually looks like. So those solid features, just like hand washing, some new watch faces and everything else, sleep tracking, I think are great additions, but let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're picking up a new Apple watch or what version you're using right now to install this on. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.